Welcome everyone to the HWBOT World Series 2016 and I will be doing the interview uh, right here with a uh, few of our guests. The first guest for today is Mr. Breeze. Uh, welcome on board. Thanks very much Trufman, it's great to be here. Um, so for all the people that just uh, saw you this weekend on uh, on the live uh, that we did on Twitch or on the replay that we did on uh, we put on, on YouTube, um, who are you and how did you discover overclocking? Um, so I'm from Connecticut in the United States. I got into overclocking um, initially uh, just as a way to try to make my crappy old computer go faster and that was about four years ago. And then like a lot of these guys now, I just went down the rabbit hole trying to get faster and faster all the time and uh, brought me to this. Well, wow, that's uh, quite, quite impressive to, uh, to see that. Uh, you were here actually last year as well. I for was. the 2015 and uh, That's right. the, the experience you had was so awesome that you wanted to come back this year? Oh, it was fantastic. Last year I was uh, in the same situation as a number of the guys that came this year. Uh, I was new to Sub-Zero overclocking, didn't really know what I was doing with LN2, so it was a great opportunity to learn from guys who really knew what they were doing. And uh, this year, I don't know a whole lot more about it, but a little bit more. So I felt like it was a good step actually to try and compete and get some submissions in for the qualifiers. And uh, it was a good time. I enjoyed it a lot. Well, you, you did great because, um, you know, as you say, you don't have much experience, extended experience. In I the, did great finishing third out of three. Yeah. No, but no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, not, it's, not what, it's not what I mean. Come on. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> but it, it's, it's great that no, it actually you, you, you did show off that you could actually push and put Raspardi in some situation that you had yeah. to, to put a, a, a score. Cause Absolutely. Because you were in the lead for like about 10 minutes. On, yeah. on the on the run, yeah. so no, I felt at, like at I this had point, a shot. I, yeah, I think that Tony, like Raspardi, was at some point like, "Oh damn, I have to, I really have to push it because I really yeah. want to, you know, to show what I can, I, I can do for it." Yeah, I think it's one of the big advantages of the live overclocking setting is that it creates pressure that you have to deal with. Uh, it creates some excitement that you, as a competitor, have to manage. There's also a lot of uncertainty when it's standardized hardware from a lottery draw. It's not pre bin not necessarily anything that you're very familiar with. So you do have to be able to adjust pretty quickly on the fly. And um, it, it let me put a little bit of pressure on Tony early on, but he uh, he pulled it together at the end. And then once, once we both got cold, uh, really cold on the chips, we had uh, a, a lot of stability problems. But uh, early on, I, I had a few good runs. And so, so speaking about the the competition itself, um, so you choose GPU Pi one of them, and I heard that none of you guys actually run that benchmark before. Is yeah, that true? Yeah, I've, I've only run it a little bit, um, and uh, I'm not very familiar with it. Uh, but actually, I felt like it was a good one not to veto because it's fast, and I, you know, with only 30 minutes to work with. I was willing to go with it just because I felt like I'd be able to get some runs in quickly and then try to work on pushing the edge of stability and see if I could get faster. Whereas with some of the other benches that were in the pot, it could have easily just, I mean, even Cinebench in the final, you know, you could see like you get three quarters of the way through one of those runs and the system hard locks and you're just like, oh man. So it was a, it was a good choice, I think, for, for that semifinal. It was a good fit for both of us. That, that's the trick. Like every seconds you lose, uh, just yeah. just count towards your 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 lack of time at the end of the round. Um, how do you like the the format, the one versus one in this thirty minutes uh, special bench? I, I think it's great. I mean, I think the only advantage I could think of for a longer time limit would just be the opportunity to get the CPUs colder. But with stock Intel CPUs, if they haven't been modified, deleted. I mean, there's only so cold you can get them anyway before you run into problems, as all of us did during the competitive round. So, you know, I think given given that 
kind of necessary part of it, I think, as far as standardizing the hardware, I think 30 minutes is a good fit. And it's short enough to make it exciting, it is. Yeah, so speaking of uh, like stock CPU, you, you were talking about not deleting the CPU. Uh, you guys did something I, I was not expecting at all uh, yesterday evening after the qualifier. So after the qualifier, we asked you guys, okay, do you want the, the CPU and memory right away? And you know, do the pre-testing, set up your system and everything for, for later on to, for tomorrow. And you say, nope. No, no, none of them want it. It's like, uh, why did you choose to do it this way and, and not just try to, uh, to pre-bench everything you could? You know, I think uh, it's to the credit of my co-competitors, actually, that I think uh, they're pretty nice guys. And I think they probably felt like um, it was a little bit of a way to level the playing field to give us less time um, with the chips overall beforehand. Um, which I was certainly grateful for. I thought that was uh, a nice touch. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know that having them last night would have made uh, a huge difference at overall. Maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. Um, I think just once you kind of get in the arena up on the stage and you're running the benches, um, there's only so much that I think knowing in advance would do for you in that shortest span of time. <laughs> and um, like talking about the short amount of span or time, and you, it's it's quite common that you will lose or forget to do something when you're on yeah. stage. Yeah. Uh, how did you uh, cope up with that during the uh, the 30 minutes of the of the semifinal? Um, I I just really tried not to think about it. Actually, I tried not to think about um, what I might be forgetting to do. I tried to just settle into a rhythm of doing the things I usually do, um, setting the things I usually do, and just being ready to roll right back to a, to a baseline profile if things weren't working. Um, I think maybe that's the, the valuable part, and that's something that we all, I think all of us did beforehand, I certainly did, was just having, like setting up a, a baseline profile to work from so that if everything wasn't working, you could go back to kind of all the settings that you knew you needed to have that were not the default settings. Well, that's uh, quite interesting. Um, overall, for the for the world tour event, how did you uh, did you feel the was the world tour here in the, in North America? I thought it was fantastic. I had a great time. These guys were phenomenal competitors. They're kind of mentors to me. I mean, they're amazing at what they do. I've learned a ton from them. So it was really just awesome to be able to be here and bench with them. So you were here in 2015. You're here in 2016. Will you be there in 2017? We're we're gonna try to make it a three peat. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, congratulations Absolutely. again on your third place, and uh, we hope to see you in the next few competitions, uh, even online or uh, live competition. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Chief. You're welcome.